morning, Bob. Hi. How are you this morning? Okay. Hey, the sun's going to shine. We got some good rain last night for those flowers for the ladies in their backyard. Right. The gardens are going to start growing here in another month. you plant a garden, Bob? Uh, I don't plant a garden, but I have some flowers. And yeah. they came up and kind of just like fell over. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. You, don't, you ever had a garden? Uh, when I was a kid, my dad had one. We grew tomatoes and corn and oh, all yeah. sorts of stuff, yeah. Isn't that something back in the day? Yep. Everybody had a garden. Sure. Anymore, well, if we had the room for it, sure. Yeah, we right, had a lot of room. Right. So. Yeah, it's true. You know, uh, today not too many people have enough room. But anyway, we do. We have a pretty good garden. That doesn't mean come and raid it, though. Yeah. But anyway, well, yeah, I'm, I'm afraid you get the deer. The deer is going to come and, you know, you got to put a fence up or else the deer will have uh, yeah. dinner. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. But if you put enough up, they'll uh, they'll leave it alone. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah, the Amish do a great job every year. You know, down a five mile road, we frequent that place after we run out of ours. But we do a lot of canning. We we have quite a bit of quite a quite a bit of uh, coming out of our garden there. Yep. But you know, uh, my brother Joe uh, turned sixty nine today, Bob. Wow, happy you birthday! You never met my brother Joe, have you? Nope, I have not. Well, he was quite a horseman. He worked for Jerry Mason back in the day, uh, right out of high school, and went to Florida and. And uh, did a lot of things out of town. He kind of left town right after he graduated from high school, of the 12 of us. Right. And then he ended up in Montana and done real well out there. And uh, right now he's uh, kind of under the weather with his eye and what's going on with him health-wise. But, hell, he's 69 years old. There you go. Should have stayed in Michigan. That's it. It probably wouldn't happen. But That's right. anyway, I want to wish my brother Joe, if he can hear me out there in Montana, Billings, Montana. There you go. He's Good been day. out there, I bet you, for 45 wow. years. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Hard to believe, isn't it? But anyway, and then uh, this past uh, couple of weeks ago, probably was Bernal Beamer died, and uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I forgot to talk about him last week. But uh, Bernal was a character, and that's uh, putting it nicely. I loved the guy. Uh, he was my neighbor for a lot of years, and I just want to touch on a few things. Uh, he was a good horseman. Uh, he was a hard, hard nosed businessman. Um, he never asked for nothing he, uh, that he didn't deserve. Um, yeah, he was a pinnacle of men. I mean, he's a tough old bird. We used to have a lot of horse uh, fun with the horses. He, uh, I'll never forget the one story Matt and Joe uh, Weckelman had a little uh, horse uh, from Doc Gilbert. Uh, her name was Bertie McMurr, and she had sore feet. And I told him, boys, I said, you guys just jog her 600 miles before you turn her, and uh, she'll be a good horse. Well, luck have it, they turned into with a pretty good horse there. And, Matt took her over to race her the first time in Harrison, and I couldn't go, had to work. And uh, Burnell took him, and uh, Burnell got a driver for him. The driver I wanted wasn't there. And uh, Matt said, well, my dad doesn't really care for that guy. And uh, Burnell said, your dad's not here, <laughs> and so we're going to get him to drive. And anyway, he ended up winning with the horse, and the rest of the summer was history. They won more than they got beat, but mm. they had a lot of... Uh, Burnell was just a terrific guy, and I sat on his porch and drank some beer with him about every other night back in the day, and we'd sit there and talk about his life, and and uh, he would always supply the beer. And one night we we're sitting there, and I said uh, I had enough for now, I had three or four, you know, and uh, he said I'll have one more, and he was pretty persistent. And I said, well, one more, and then I got to go home. And he hollered at his wife, Donna, bring one more. He promises he'll go home. <laughs> Yeah. But that's what it, it, it was, you know, he was just funny that way. He was just a great guy. <laughs> but anyway, our condolences to yeah. the yeah, great yeah. people. Yeah. I know there's other people that have died this last week, too. I should bring the old bit with me. Maybe I have it on my phone here. But along with me, I brought my brother Peter with me, uh, 87 years that's old. It, Almost. Yeah. Huh? Almost. 86 yeah. going on 86. Well, now that we talk about age, Pete, we don't want to forget to uh, say our prayers for Mike Brown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We do. We do. And Randy Fry. Yep. Uh, Mike's yep. under the yep. weather. He's yep. in Grand Rapids. A kidney infection. I think possibly a gallbladder. And that's mm. really painful. 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 Yeah. yeah. And uh, Randy Fry uh, from out there to uh, Grant Center Way, you might call it. Uh, he's under the weather. Uh, not doing too well, uh, so keep his family in your prayers and him. Yeah, it's... Uh, well, last week, Pat, uh, yeah. I had to go down and uh, get my cancer treatment at the University of Michigan, Fermagon, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and it does, it's the, uh, you know, it's uh, the cancer shot, and mm -hmm. it's uh, chemotherapy, mm -hmm. which I got to take kind of every night. It kind of, kind of make, I, I see myself kind of failing, not failing, but I see myself kind of going downhill a little bit the last three or four months. I don't know why. 
I just am not my, I, I kind of wobble when I walk a little bit. I'm taking medication, and it said that will cause dizziness. So maybe that's what the problem is, or the, the dizziness I'm getting from the medication. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm out of the hospital. I'm not like a lot of my friends. And I hope, uh, you know, I'm still on the school board, and I can uh, do that for the next couple of years. And, and uh, if I feel good, I'll probably run for another six. And, there you go. Uh, you know. <laughs> really need to do that, you know. That keeps yeah, you alive. You tell me half the time I'm too old. Well, you are, but uh, <laughs> keeps you alive. If that's what we got to do, is yeah, give you a position yeah, we'll on the school board. Well, we're trying to get we'll we're do. trying to get we're trying to get Hillcrest back open. I don't That'd know if you great. went to Hillcrest or not. Yeah, but. I did. Kenny Garden, Mrs. Miller, <laughs> Dan Hicks, and I are in the same class. We yeah. used to skip uh, yeah. go up in the hills with our B. Yeah, my my daughter was principal there one time <laughs> of uh, Hillcrest. And she was. She, before she went over back to Riverview, but uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it's. It, we hope with the ISD we can maybe get this thing going, and with all the action coming around town, uh, our school system keeps growing and growing and growing. And uh, we have basically just ran out of room. We put yeah. uh, you know the new additions on uh, Riverview and the new additions on uh, Brookside, and uh, we just uh, we're just out of room. Well, I think uh, opening up Hillcrest would be good for the neighborhood too. Well, I hope it would be. That's yeah. isn't that to call it a bloody fifth ward? Yeah, no, when, bloody third ward. Bloody third ward. Okay, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. I thought it was bloody fifth. Yeah. I apologize. Fifth was Cross River. No, yeah. death was the fifth ward. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that was tougher than the third ward. Yeah, yeah. But but you know, it's uh, it's uh, kind of neat. Uh, it's kind of neat the way things are going on in this town, and uh, you know the. It's sometimes a little rough when you get one person against the other, and. Uh, you know, instead of love thy neighbor, you know, and uh, I don't know about yeah. loving thy neighbor anymore, but, you know, that's one thing about Pat and I. We uh, we can have differences of, pin- of opinion. Right. He goes one way, I go the other, and I love him, and I, I hope he loves me. I'm heterosexual, <laughs> and you're bisexual, so, yeah. Yeah, we can't be the same. But we have a good time together, and it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And you know, It is. It's a lot yeah. of fun, you know, and it's too bad that we have so many critics. My God, you say something, you blow it out the wrong hole, and it's like, oh, my God. And then God, it goes over all over town. And we're, whatever, I, hear, yeah. I hear that we at Curry's, when we have, uh, I, I go in there for breakfast almost every morning, and I know I have coffee every morning that I'm in town. But it, it, it what I was told, that we are controlling what going on, what's going on in the city. Just and that's not what we talk about. We just talked about this morning. Speak. Kim Wells just uh, right. Kim Wells just got back from Florida. Yes, he did. So we're talking about Kim Wells. We're talking about Mike Brown. We're right. talking about you know just a lot of different. And we're things. talking about Nancy Horan. Yeah, she turned yeah, ninety yeah, years old. Yeah, you know Tasha and Marilyn and, uh, and, and Sharon Howard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <coughs> Mrs. Fig. What's her first? Uh, uh, wait a minute. I'll think about it. Doreen. Yeah, very good. I, I was just testing yeah. your. Uh, As Gene Figg's wife. Right. He Beautiful graduated in 1958 from Mount Pleasant High School with, with my wife. wife. Yep. And yep. he played basketball. And I yep. think he, I don't know if he played a little football. He looks like he might be spindle legs to play football, but he was a good uh, basketball player. They were uh, there at the Eagles Friday night celebrating Nancy's 90th yeah. birthday. She's huh. out there at the Brooks. But she looks great. Yeah. I told her, I said, you know, Nancy, I, you had gray hair 50 years ago. Well, Nan- so 90's not, not old, Pat. 90's not, really, not old. Nope. And her mind is good. Yeah. And her, I yeah. gave her a big kiss and she goes i haven't been kissed we got a couple of good looking guys that just walked in if that's what you want to call them (laughs) but uh they're workers that's for sure but anyway i just wanted to say happy birthday nancy and then uh, madison venix turned 14 yesterday Yep, and his Uh, wife got married chris's uh, son got married well you're feeling better yeah jump right in that's i know up in marion got married in marion who did uh and chris venix's son yeah Got yeah. married in Marion, Michigan. Yeah. And you know who the, the person was that did the officiating Morning of the general. ceremony? No. Was uh, Shane Strickler. He was he a priest. Did. Yeah, he was a priest for the day. Shane Strickler? Yeah, uh, Strain got the, was a priest for the day, and he married him. And oh, uh, Lord. I hope that's a legal marriage, by the way. <laughs> oh, God help us. There wasn't any wine. But anyway... Congratulations. Vince. Yeah, but did it, we we did well, I know we got to say it, but we are on B1039 You're and that is better. Big Rapids. Bob the Big, 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 big Rapids, Michigan, number 1 in 80s and more. Am I talking too loud, Pat? I don't know. Talking too much. But I know that. that talking but we're, too much. We're enjoying it. Pat, I'm not talking too much. Okay. I'm just thankful to be here. I've been here in a month. 
I did do the Chris Long show, but ba- 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 Buzz and Big Rapids yesterday, and that was uh, it was a lot of fun. He came to my house, and I did it in my easy chair. Well, I want to thank uh, thank you for being quiet for a minute. And you got some uh, guests, uh, so you want to? Introduce I them. will in a minute, but I want to get through my list here. Uh, Avery Chapit turned 21. Okay. And I uh, remember telling Stacy when she hit high school, I said, well, don't worry, Stacy. Blink of an eye, she'll be through high school. And now she's 21. Wow. But happy birthday, Avery. Now, there's one girl that has grown up being humble and kind. And she could be a spoiled little brat, but Stacy and John, both their daughters, they've done a great job on them. So if you want to be a, a good parent, Emulate those two, and you will be. Hey, I got to say something. You yeah. talk about fine ladies. Yeah. I played cards with her daughter uh, Saturday night at the uh, Eagles. It was a uh, Uber tournament. In fact, we, we won the money. Lucy and I, we both won the money. But she Jeannie Fribley. Oh, yeah. And I played, uh, and I, Jeannie is such a great lady, and she listens to us uh, yeah. all the time, yep, uh, even though I'm not here. Right. She said she pretends I'm here and likes to listen to you, right. which I don't know. But I also want to say hi to the FedEx guys, and uh, I want to say hi to Dave Baker and the mayor. You know, the mayor, we got the, we got the Toski Stone. I seen him in two days. And, uh, yeah, he hadn't been around, but no. Ben Walt, Walworth, Ben, uh, and Salt Mark Bellman, uh, he's always there. Josh, Seth, Bud, Kim, Jack Frizzell, they're always there having a little coffee action. But we had Jim Samuels in this morning, and then uh, he and Don Helder talked a little bit about being lawyers. But, uh, okay, go ahead, Fred. Uh, right, thanks. Go ahead, so I want to I wanna thank Kurt Dabowski and his company that helped at the St. Mary's Gala. Great St. Mary's party, yeah. They had another. You, how would you know you weren't there? Well, I was uh, just coming back from the hospital, Pat, and I was kind of Oh, weak. you were in town. You could have been there. I could have anyway, been there. I could have been Anyway, you went to Hawkins Friday night, so don't Well, I played cards show. Saturday night. What? Right. <laughs> ha, 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 ha. But anyway... Uh, Anyway, St. Mary's Gala was very successful Saturday night. Thanks to you people out there in uh, Big Rapids area and surroundings. Uh, a lot of great people there. They were very giving. And this year's horse race, the celebrity horse race that we put on at the fairgrounds, will be on Tuesday night, I believe. Who won that, Pat? Uh, Tiffany Rakoff and John Rakoff uh, bought it for $5,000. and then. Uh, wow, that was a great price. Yeah. And then there was another 2000 after that, 100 bucks a couple uh, dished out to uh, make it a grand total of $7,000 for this year's horse race from the Celebrity Race. Uh, Tim Cook, I want to uh, thank you personally, and St. Mary's thanks you. He was the underbidder. He won it real bad. But, my Lord, we just it was a great crowd. Tyler Schuberg did a great job emceeing it. Uh, Philip, my brother Philip was auctioneer, another great year, the, another... Uh, great um, auctioneer that he was that night, but uh, Tyler did a great job. Philip, uh, my hats off to both. How many guys. horses, Pat? You know, Four. people don't thank uh, pay, people don't, don't thank they don't thank you enough. Mm. You know, you started this. They do thing. enough criticism. Pat, they don't need Pat, to. Pat, yeah, shut down for a minute, will you? Yeah, go ahead. they don't thank you enough. You've probably raised a couple three hundred thousand dollars in that horse race over the years. Yeah, and uh, that's the Curry family, Matt and Pat, and. Uh, Matt did train. He trained me, and Pat trained me, and Pat was trying to kill me the first time I rode one of them. Not the first time. Yeah, the first. Well, oh, it was the first time. Big Red. You put me on Big I Red. I know, but that wasn't the first time. <laughs> Second time. Uh, well, but I almost died. You didn't, though. <laughs> you didn't. But anyway, you know, it's that time of year. Uh, we're going to go back and forth here a little bit. But it's that time of year that uh, we call it, what, Earth Day coming up? Or yep, that was Earth yesterday. Day? Yeah, okay, so this is fitting today. I got a couple guys here with me today, uh, Jeff Garrett and Brad Luban. Um, they just came off the street. I just picked them off randomly out of this mud puddle that they were sucking water out to go uh, throw some on uh, grass. But, uh, you know, there's so many things we uh, do right in life, and sometimes we need a little help to do it right or And uh, that's when it comes to landscaping and uh, your lawn, your garden, or whatever. But anyway, uh, I got Jeff Garrett uh, kindly... Kind of new to the area. What what year did you come here, Jeff? Uh, 2008, Pat. 2008, yeah. What brought you to Big Rapids? Uh, my wife, uh, she's a Ferris alumni. She uh, started going to school in 2007 here in Big Rapids. And uh, we liked the area, and we, we uh, stuck around. So where are you from? We're from Elma. Oh, Elma. So not, not too not, far away. No, not too far at all. No. Do you remember Curry Furniture? I bet your dad does. Yeah, I don't remember that. That no. was downtown. No, hell, it was closed back in the, wow years go by 80s i guess but uh right down the street 
downtown Elma with my uncle Leon's uh, Curry Furniture for a lot of years. But anyway, so you grew up in Elma, and then uh, what got you into the landscaping business in the yard? Well, I, all through high school, I worked for a company, um, and then uh, my aunt also worked for that company, and uh, she uh, is now working with me, but uh, she kind of kept me in that uh, industry. She's uh, taught me a lot throughout the years, and um, now she's, she's up here working with us. Um, she does a lot of our design work, and um, she does a lot of the estimating for the landscape side of the business, which is great, helping yep. me out a lot. So, Well, uh, now, what you've been here for since 2007. What's the perception of Big Raps to you? What do you what do you see the positives and is there any negatives since you've been here? Well, I like uh, it's kind of a small town feel to me. Uh, it's you know it's about the same size as Alma, but uh, um, I really like it here. Um, I love the river. We, we like to be on the water, um, and it's just a it's a great community. Um, a lot of a lot of great people here. Yeah. So I know you met a great one over here, Brad Duban. Uh, I've known Brad oh, sure. for a few years now, and. Uh, a good man, Brad. Uh, he's tried to bring the community together. Uh, some people think, well, he's on that side or that side or that side, but I, I, uh, I think the world of you, Brad. I really do, and I, uh, I like your perspective on things. How many years you've been here now, Brad? I came to Ferris the year of '91 and left in '95, and then came back in '06 uh, to work for an infrastructure contractor based out of uh, Leroy, Michigan, and worked in their office. And then met my wife, Krista Stern, at church. And then within five months, we were married and have had a wonderful marriage since then. Never had a fight. She always puts her faith first. I've tried to argue with her once in a while just to get in a little tiff, but she's a very strong That doesn't work woman. out, buddy. <laughs> and I, lo- I love her for it. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, we have a, you have a new sponsor here, Pat, Jeff, with his company, Michigan Excavating Landscaping. And then you're going to have another sponsor, Steve Kufchuk who used to live in the community on the other side of the Maple Street Bridge in the Comstock Mansion House um, fraternity I was involved with at that time. So he's going to be advertising and spoke to Jen this morning as well. So you're going to be buying me lunch wow, at Curry Station so, this, yeah. this yeah. afternoon. Well, you, now you, uh, you've been in dirt your whole life, pretty much. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm, yes, absolutely. Third generation. Yeah. My, my family was in the site development, site development business and uh, infrastructure. They did a lot of work for General Motors back in Flint. We're based out of Lapeer. Um, when NAFTA came along, you know, wiped out all of our jobs here in the state, took away um, good paying jobs, good manufacturing jobs, the pensions and so on and so forth, and just kind of killed our business off as well, being that we were tied in pretty heavily with the unions at that time. So I went to work for a company after I graduated from college. Like I said, um, being their con- construction manager estimator, and uh, always loved the infrastructure, excavating side of the business, but always loved the bigger work. And there was a time Jeff worked for me, and I knew Jeff had a great work ethic, and I knew he'd be very successful with his business. And I kind of like the Grand Rapids, Holland area myself for work, um, just because I want to be more established down here in the bigger stuff. But I love our small town community. I love the atmosphere. Uh, every morning I take my dog, General Patton, because I'm a huge Patton fan. In World War II buff, but uh, we walk along Mitchell Creek between my house. I'm west of uh, Carmen Beans. Go up behind Carmen Beans' house. We all have trails back there along the creek and just really enjoy the serenity of that every morning, walking around with the dog. Well, now, in your business now is uh, uh, what? We do uh, demolition, dismantling, environmental services. So there's a lot of work doing that because there's a lot of old buildings around here, eh? There's, uh, we chase the government federal money. There's a lot of money available right now, currently available, to uh, clean up a lot of uh, industrial, commercial, and uh, urban blight. Yes. Now, what what do you what do you see as Big Rapids drawing you here? What what do you like best about Big Rapids? Well, I could have gone to college at um, not Michigan. Didn't have the grades from Michigan, but I pretty much could have gone anywhere else I wanted to of. But I at the time was attracted to the outdoors. I loved snowmobiling. We used to get snow here at that time, skiing, and I'm usually on the slopes on the weekends, and I just always loved the outdoor environment and the nature of the, of the area. And uh, you're always friendly to all of us when we prefer students at the time coming to Curry's. I was there uh, when you and John were doing your major redevelopment there. And it's just always a very friendly community, um, always very open in. My uncle, 
and Ryan Monk were um, roommates in, in a mortuary school as well down to Wayne State. So I had didn't a connection. know that. I had a connection there as well. So yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, a lot of people get mad at me because my RFD uh, stance that'd be Mayor Barry. Uh, I I, uh, I always looked at Big Rapids as an opportunity for anybody that wanted to work. Now going there. Are you having trouble getting workers at your place? Everyone has trouble getting workers nowadays. Mm-hmm. We're willing, I wonder why that is, Brad. Where, where was the turning point? We're willing to pay more than others. And we still cannot find them. Um, it's just the type of work I personally do and Jeff does as well. We know we're hands-on in the dirt, you know, working, paying our taxes and sweat equity. And we love what we do. And you can find some guys that love doing it, but as Throughout the years, I've always wanted to grow more and more into uh, bigger projects, and it's just hard to find those who are wanting to to be in that industry, even if you are willing to pay workmen's um, benefits, such as health insurance and retirement. It's just a different industry and a different world that we live in currently. Um, the work ethic is there, I believe. I truly do, but we just got to show them that skilled trades are still available, and it's a good-paying profession. You know what? My solution is to make them hungry, they will work. Obviously, we don't have that problem right now in America. Everybody's getting fed, so why work, right? That's another issue we're having. We have too many government incentives um, that encourages them to, you know, basically not, not to work. Um, I mean, if you look at this guy next to you, Pete Kent, now I'm not bragging you up, Pete, but I don't admire you, but I admire your work ethic. Or did I say that right, Pete? I, I love you. But anyway, your work ethic, you, you started with nothing. You don't have a college education. No, 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 I don't. I was kicked out of high school. And you should, you probably should have been. But you made it in life. Yeah. Nobody gave you anything. No one. And my, my greatest, I, I just don't understand it. What do you think, Jeff? Are you having trouble getting workers? Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy. Um, you know, it's a college town here in Big Rapids, so... We'll find a lot of uh, college kids throughout the summer, but you invest some time and, and money into them, and then you know four years later they're gone. So you're having to start all over again. So it's you know it's a it's an issue. Um, it's it's not easy. You know uh, I am pretty pleased though with the programs at Ferris athletic wise because I see a lot of these football players are little entrepreneurs. I know a couple of them that started a welding shop up on their own as they're playing football at Ferris, and I see a couple others doing yard work or dock work and i don't know dock dogs i think the one company and just uh wow i you know so there is some young people out there a lot of young people there's a move they're movers they built they move furniture they move your house i mean you know household furniture now how and they household they? furniture i oh, said okay. household furniture He's smoking weed again i wasn't house. smoking weed might take a gummy or two but uh no no, no. they moved the household furniture and uh you know they're hard workers, and uh, yeah, they, and they're staying. They 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 finished college. You know, I tell you what. Back in 1998 or nine, I uh, had a lot of. Well, I've always had high school students work for me, but about in the 90s, I decided to. You know, I just love these guys. I remember Nick Shively was in that group, and Nick Allen. Uh, they worked for me at the gas station, and I went ahead and got the Curry shirts, and I put class in 1999 on it, and I did that for four or five years. I don't know quit probably around four or five and uh i don't know i just quit doing it i guess uh got too expensive for you but is that what it was yeah but, you were uh, a little bit i did cheap it again time. and i'll tell you why i did it again uh the Vinix riley yeah Vinix, yeah uh he's a good kid good kid it's chris's boy we yeah. had him on we had him on the air here yeah and shane stricter's kids are good yep, kids they're too. good and kids. spike shane and and um chris uh, they're good kids. The yeah. mothers hard work, hell of a hard good job for them. Yeah. I'm only hard laughing work. at this. I gotta good. jump in here and say WBZX Big Rapids. My God, it's top of the hour. Right? I just did that, buddy. I just oh, went over here to have. Are we number one in the '80s? Are we number one in the '80s and more in Big Rapids? And you like country? And I love country. Yeah. There was a lot of songs Toby Keith wrote and sang that never hit the charts, isn't there? Oh, yeah, well, any uh, artist. They put out albums and albums, and, you know, certain ones hit. How so. about the one about, uh, it's about me, I feel sorry for me, or what, what you know that song? Yeah, we'll have to, we'll yeah, have to that's it good. Up. That is it good is. Song. We're going to play that today, don't. I got to, they, they have some requests. Our guests have some requests that uh, Jen got for me, so. So oh, we got people ap- actually listening to this radio station. What? I, I listen to radio station between 8.30 and 9.30. You and I. Pat Curry Show. 
Pete, you and I spent a lot of manure, but I want to go back to Jeff for a minute. <laughs> Jeff, the reason I kind of thought it was kind of cool to have you on the show is, uh, you know, like myself, uh, I found out I didn't want to be a landscaper because I picked up a rake, and that's a lot of work. And uh, last night I did that, and it reminded me of why I had to make a living doing else things, uh, like pumping gas. But anyway, going back to that, how important are leaves to a lawn? Uh, they're actually very important. You know, uh, we uh, recommend actually mulching your leaves up um, instead of removing them from your lawn completely. Um, definitely get rid of the bigger pieces, but uh, yeah, adds nutrients to your lawn. Um, it's like a, it's a free fertilizer. You know, the, the trees are providing uh, for us. So, yeah, it's great, to, great oh. to just mulch them up. All right, so you mulch them up. Then after that, is it good to aerate it in the fall or the spring? Fall. What, what does a guy want to do to his lawn right now, Jeff? Well, right now it's a good time to put your pre-emergent down if you want to get rid of your weeds in your lawn. That's that's a great time. Do fact, what now? Uh, put a pre-emergent down. So that's like, uh, you know, uh, you're going to spread a fertilizer that's going to uh, kill out all your weeds. Um, and then you're going to, you know, it uh, also feeds your lawn at the same time. It's called a weed and feed. Where do you get that at? Oh, you can get that at the Bigger Epics Farm and Garden. Uh, there you go. Steve Kramer will love you for that. There we go, yeah. Is that where you get your stuff a lot? Uh, we try to get as much as we can from there. You know, yeah. some of the bigger Charlie, projects, Steve, we, good. we got to yeah, go, go down. But, um, yeah. So, Jeff, I didn't know what uh, company. You, I, I was probably getting water. Some, what company do you have in town? Uh, Michigan Landscape and Excavate. So, and how, uh, how many people do you have working for you? Right now we have four. Four. Yeah. And yep. you're all over Macosta County? Macosta County, uh, or actually uh, we've chased a job up to the UP for uh, Iltis Construction here before. Uh, so we try to stick around here. We don't like to travel that far. but uh, Like, do you do snow removal? Too, nope, we no, we do not do snow removal. Um, we Smart. do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We don't like getting up in the middle of the night. Uh, right. We do uh, right. a lot of uh, excavating, um, and then we do uh, a ton of landscaping in the area. We do a lot of retaining walls, uh, patios, a lot oh, of the yeah. custom custom yeah. type work uh, when oh, it comes to great. landscaping. That's great. I, 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 I didn't hear that. I was getting water, and I was using the gentleman's room. Oh, uh, sure. Because Pat Curry keeps his gentleman's room locked. Uh-oh. All he right. won't let me in. There you go. Hey, all right, so getting back to lawns. So, now here I am. This is the time of year. He wants get. free advice on his lawn. What he wants, instead of paying you to come over and do it, he wants right. some free advice. Right. So, what's the best time of year to do all this? So, your pre-emergent is now. You know, get it right done right now. now. Um, ground temperatures are warm enough to to get that uh, um, weed and feed working, working in your lawn. Um, now, back to aeration. Fall is better to do that. You, you know, you do a plug aeration. And then you go go through and overseed it. Um, that's going to give you your best return on investment there. So uh, don't seed in the spring so much. No, I mean you can you yeah. can absolutely do it. Um, but as far as aeration and overseeding, fall is a is a better time. Right now is a great time to plant grass. You know, say you got a new lawn going in, or you know, patch some patch some areas up. Uh, yeah, sure enough, uh, throw your throw your seed down and rake it into the soil a little bit, um, or give us a call. We'll come and hydro seed it for you. That's what if you what if you don't have like we don't have a lawn we have all euonymus we have flowers we got nothing but beds uh, you know an acre full of flowers and beds and shrubs and stuff like that what do you do then Water. you just you just uh, you just fertilize it well that might be a better better uh, question for Robin she's uh, she's kind of our, our plant uh, plant, plant lady, plant lady. Um, I'm not too familiar with uh, what what goes on there so so. Uh, Thanks for that question. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, are you Pat? a first-time caller? No, my name's Ernie Schlitz. Quit Who are you? Quit listening. <clears throat> All right, so getting back to the lawns. Hydro seeding over just doing it yourself, spraying uh, uh, seed out and some fertilizer. Why would a guy hydro seed over that? Well, there's a lot of benefits to hydro seed. Uh, number one, um, you're getting a, a mulch, a wood fiber mulch that's mixed in with your seed, and that's going to help you hold moisture so you don't have to water as often. Um, another benefit to the hydro seed is, uh, say you, uh, you have a slope on your lawn, um, and uh, it rains. It rains pretty Runs hard. Runs off. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna get a bunch of your seed running down, and you're gonna lose it. So the hydro seed helps hold that all together. Um, kind of helps hold a. I always think when you put seed down, it becomes lunch for the birds, and then you have no more seed. Is yeah. that the case? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, they uh, they definitely like the like the grass seed. So try to you know. Maybe keep your BB gun out. And ah, there and, uh, you go. Yeah. Kick them well, off. When, when, when you hydro seed, <clears throat> uh, how long does it take for the seed to uh, come up? 
Yeah, to uh, germinate, uh, you know, your ryegrass is going to come up first. Uh, yeah, that can come up in, you know, seven days. You'll start seeing that that start shooting up a little bit. Um, then your fescues and then your, your bluegrass, um, your Kentucky bluegrass, that actually takes about 45 days to germinate. But um, that's why it's always good to have a, you know, a decent mix of the different types of seeds, get your ryegrass popping up soon so you have that nice green lawn. And then the fescue and uh, Kentucky will kind of follow along. So uh, I see a lot of people uh, will seed their lawn and then throw <coughs> straw on it. So yes. Is that similar to hydro seed? Or? Uh, sort of, but it's a mess. Um, you know, the hydro seed... Uh, a great, great benefit is uh, you're, you're um, using a product that's uh, getting recycled. Um, hydro, uh, hydro mulch is made of either wood fiber, so just ground up wood fibers, or um, newspapers. They'll, they'll grind up a, you know, a lot of the shreddings from uh, newspapers and whatnot. They'll, they'll make that into a hydro mulch and a uh, great way to recycle. So, You know, uh, Bob, I want to take a moment and thank you this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, usually... You hold hands with our guest. That <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bob has never said he usually will say something. You're pounding the desk, and that goes into oh, the mic. Yes. yes. So anyway, you're a little nervous. I understand that. Pete does that a lot. I do it all the time. Pete pounds off. I do it all the time. I put these pads in, and everybody puts them under the microphone. Yeah, I do them all yeah. the time. All anyway, no, that's fine. But anyway, I'm surprised because he hasn't said anything. Normally, he'll say. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> hey, Jeff, will you go over to Pat Curry's just as a favor to me, and I'll pay for a consultant fee for you. But go over and look at his lawn and tell him what he's going to have done and tell him how much it's going to cost, and he'll try to barter you down. But he needs help. Well, speaking and of He's I got a beautiful I, I, house, I, I, I but he needs help God. from an expert. You're not the expert. No, but uh, going back to hydro seeding to the straw, <laughs> so the straw is a messier. And how, what's the cost factor there? <laughs> you know, you know the hydro the hydro mulch costs definitely a little a little bit more, but um, it's much less messy. Um, I think it's it's worth the investment. Um, I think uh, you know you get your your fertilizer mixed in with the hydro mulch, your seed, um, it all holds together well. Um, I, I just I don't think there's much of a comparison there. I think. But, uh, uh, but you you know the formula. Yes. A, a normal person couldn't go rent a hydro seeder and, and go, I'll try it myself. He couldn't do that. Well, one. they can try all they want, but, you know, there's there's some science to it and, right. and whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. What if you I know, got an I acre got... lot? How much would it cost? An oh. acre lot. Just say an acre lot oh. for you to come over and do it. And do the, well, that's do about right. four loads of hydro seeds. So, you know, it depends on the type of seed you want to use. And if you got hills and whatnot, how well, much hydro Well, the average. average yeah, we'll say, uh, you know, right around uh, for an acre, you're probably looking at, um, you know, 4500 bucks. You know, that's, you're going to have a lawn that looks like outstanding. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, of course, be, if you have some irrigation, that's going to help. And then do you check it out every year, and do you put a little stuff on it every year or no? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got to, you know, if you want a nice lawn, you got to, you know, keep up on your fertilizing and whatnot. I know. So. See, we couldn't I afford I don't have to horse shit on mine. <laughs> but anyway. That's not a, Hey, uh, Pat. Well, I did. Pat. Chickens will sweat through. Pat. I'm sorry. Shoot. Oh, Lord. You're live on air, Pat. Oh, like. Horse manure, you, you say. Them words horse on manure. Netflix. But anyway, we're on live. Yeah. 103 point. Hey, anyway, that's, why do you're, that's why you're on the Jeff, Wait a minute, uh, wait a minute. Let me do just, uh, I got to do the yes, right do the advertising. We got a little bit of uh, Big, Big, Big Rapids Pennzoil and Auto Repair, Zach, Zach Wells. And you know what about Zach? He's the auto doctor of Big Rapids. So and they sell tires, they sell everything. In fact, I just got my oil changed there yesterday. But, you know, and you want to go to see Zach. If you want insurance, Seth, uh, Seth, Seth, where, man? He's in uh, Lake Osceola Bank in uh, Ferry Street and also the old uh, Lake Osceola in uh, Baldwin. We got uh, G -G -G Gilbert's Carpet and Tile, Ta George and Tom. They did my carpeting about 30 years ago, and they're incredible. Uh, we got Benton Baker of Big Rapids, and they own all the car dealerships in Big Rapids, the new car dealerships. We got the DW2 Drywall, Dale Whaley, and uh, they are fantastic uh, people doing this kind of stuff. And then we have the landscaping. We have, uh, help me out, oh, uh, landscaping, Michigan Landscaping and Excavate. And guess who the owner is? He's sitting right here. His name is J -J 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 Jeff Garrett. And uh, we've been talking to him. And I'm going to tell you something. I can't see a nicer looking guy and a nicer guy. And he's uh, just a, a pure quality guy. And I think he'd Thank be you. very, very honest for you. Thank you. So please. if you want to go out and get some landscaping done, you want to make sure you call. Uh, Jeff Garrett, and that phone number is 231-349-4667.
and make sure you call him because, you know, he is, I'm so impressed with what he had to say and stuff I didn't even know. If I had a lawn, I would hire him right now, but I do not have a lawn. But he would be the guy I would hire to actually look at my lawn. I'm not paying 4500 bucks for you to have yours done. But I you would, would pay. I would I pay. No, I would. In yeah. fact, I thought you were talking about me when you. Were I would pay four. I, I would pay four dollars and fifty cents, maybe. But uh, buy your coffee. I'd be happy. <laughs> hey, what do you mean by my coffee? Yeah, Brad. Hey, Pat. Um, Pete, can you uh, give a little hands out to Jeff and what he's done for the community here, and explain to him what he did with the well, family? I was going to get to that, but okay. let Pat Curry do that. Pat well, no, uh, I will tell you what happened. Uh, there's can a family here in town that. Uh, their daughter has cancer and born with cancer, and it's just sad. And when the guy told me about it, I, I, I actually did tear up on the story because I have seven grandchildren, and they're all healthy. Well, Owen's got stomach flu right now. Keep him in your prayers because that's scary. Little Owen, man. Yeah, yeah my he's favorite. Not, he's tougher than nails. But anyway, you know, uh, I've been very blessed with my family. I have uh, My siblings are all gone or all here except for one, and so we've been blessed. So I go on with life. And, and life is good to us, even with your critics. They're, they're good people out there. So this family has a challenge, and uh, they've been going along with it for four or five years. I think the little girl's four or five. And uh, they spend a lot of money. You know, insurance covers so much, but they have a lot of money wrapped up in DeVos there. And so uh, him and I were talking, and I went over to his house, and I looked at his lawn, and no black dirt, no nothing, you know, and... And I thought, my Lord, you know, that little girl would love to go outside and play in the yard, but there's no yard. It's just all uh, sand, blow sand. And it's a newer home that they bought, you know, and they, uh, the builder never finished the yard. So anyway, uh, Brad Brad and I are very good friends and, and talk uh, quite often. And I asked Brad, being he was in the business, and uh, I said, Brad, uh, everybody wants a lot of money to do this kind of work, which I which is understandable. you got to make a living. But I said, i, I got to find somebody who will give me a break on it, you know, help us out a little bit here. And uh, he introduced me to Jeff Garrett. And uh, prior to that, I didn't know who Jeff Garrett was. And uh, Brad said, oh, no, he, he's a great guy. Integrity's there, honest a guy, you know, and I think he'll give you a good deal. So uh, Jeff and Brad and I met over there to the fellow's house and, and uh, looked it over. And Jeff said, uh, yeah, I can do it. And I can do it next week. We'll get on it, you know. And, and I arranged for some black dirt to get there that it wouldn't be a cost there. And and uh, so everything was falling in place. But more importantly, I said, you know, there is a God. You know, people keep on saying there isn't a God. There isn't a God. Yeah, there is a God. But anyway, so Jeff, I said, Jeff and Brad there, I said, what what kind of cost are we going to have in this? And he goes, nothing. Isn't that I said, something? what? Isn't that something? He goes, no. He said, I want to do it. He's my son, and I'm going to let Jeff talk about it a little bit, too, because he's been through the same thing. His son is, what, five now? Five years old, yes. And he he was... He, yes, he was uh, diagnosed with leukemia um, when he was two years old. Um, that kind of broke us. And, oh. you know, we, uh, he had a two-and-a-half-year uh, chemo treatment plan, and he just got through that in January. Um, so that was great. Um yeah, and then uh, when Brad told me about this family and um, met with you, Pat, and that was a no-brainer. I, I knew I wanted to help him out because, you know, we had some people help us along the way when we were um, um, going through the same thing. Um, it's tough. It's really tough, and um, I was I was happy to help him out. And um, I told him, I'm going to start crying right now. I am, too. I am, too. I, I, yeah, I am, you, too. You got your, yeah, I do. No, I am, too. Because really. we're old, Jeff. You, you know, I mean, just uh, Pete and... Pete's a very giving person, yeah. and, and I, I have given uh, as much as I can over life, but to find other people like you, and that's why I went home with my wife, and I, she goes, what the hell have you been doing, crying? And I said, well, I was choked up by what just happened. I said, I had no idea. I was willing to pay for it, whatever it was, but uh, Brad and Jeff. And I would have helped them. Just two angels there. And this is where karma comes into play. Only in Big Rapids. <clears throat> Only in Big yeah, Rapids. Yeah. Small community like and a are. guy like Pat, I'm not blowing him sad no, up, but I don't only a guy like Pat Curry can do something, put it together. Saint oh, Pat, it was, it was, but let me ask you, how is your child? How is your child? Now? My child is doing great. Uh, he's five uh, years. He's old. five years old now. Um, very resilient. You'd never know he had cancer. Um, he's playing soccer. Um, he's going to start uh, t-ball here soon. Is he in kindergarten. Uh, uh, he's in. He's going to Hunties for the the. Kinder Prep, so okay. he'll go to St. Mary's here uh, okay. this fall. We went and met with Mr. Sandoval um, yeah. here yeah. last week. Uh, yeah, he's he's doing awesome. Boy, that's great. Yeah. You know, so you know what it's like. You know what this other party's going through, and uh, 
it's tough. It's tough. Oh, it's it very is. tough. My wife and I were at uh, the fish fry at St. Mary's back uh, in Lent there, and uh, this couple came in uh, to have fish that night, and I invited them to sit with us. Brad was there, and uh, she was telling my wife the story about her life and her child, and uh, she started crying then. Of course, my wife got teared up, and I did too listening to the story because we as grandparents only want one thing left in life, and that's our grandchildren. You bet your and, life. You and bet live your a life. happy life and go out and play ball and you all bet. those glorious days ahead of them. But anyway, so Jeff did this, and as we're sitting there, the neighbors knew me. Well, the one gal looked out her window, and what are you guys doing? And her house like their house, no landscaping done to it. So Jeff got that job and did that for her and gave her a good price, but he couldn't do it for nothing, obviously. And then across the street, an old employee of mine uh, moved back to Big Rapids, and and uh, my wife and I, were. he came out of the house and started talking. He goes, boy, that looks nice. That guy does nice work. And he goes, well, I can connect you with him. So I did, and Jeff did their yard, and they're forever thankful. They were at uh, Gala Saturday night telling me how wonderful of a job Jeff did. So there's three customers right there that will boast uh, what kind of work he does. But well, it's word of mouth. Too. <clears throat> In a little town like Big Rapids, and Pat Curry endorses you like this, I'm telling you, that's very important because that's very meaningful. And people will listen to what Pat has to say, oh, and they'll, they'll, they'll go along with his work, really. So, I mean, you've, uh, you, you've hit the jackpot, my friend, and you're... Quality. I can just see right now. I've never met you, but you're a quality person. Well, just he's got a heart, yeah. and and that's yeah. what I tell people that you find in a small town. You know, if we're in Grand Rapids, I'll never forget back in the radiator days. I never advertised much in the radiator because word of mouth around here got me a lot of business from Everett, Barrington, surrounding areas. <clears throat> a good friend of mine down in Comstock Park had to advertise in the uh, Yellow Pages and. And all kinds, you know, if you were in a bigger city, you'd have to really advertise a lot. Oh, yes. But in a small town like this, and we have others. Word of mouth. Word of mouth. We have others that are landscapers, too, that are very fine people. And I'm sure maybe they would do the same thing. But as God would have it, the direction he took me in. And I really appreciate Brad because I know, Brad, you're sitting over there. uh, You're just a very good person. And you, you hang around with good people. And, Jeff, I can see that in you, too. So, yeah. But going back to lawns. Now. So if they want to contact you, uh, just your numbers. Yeah, yeah. If they want to contact three four nine four six six seven, and you ask for Jeff Garrett, and uh, he is MLE Michigan Landscape and Excavating, and he is the man in Big Rapids. So we now are going to be pushing Jeff Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Garrett on all our landscaping needs. Well, he's advertising. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead, but Bobby. Go. Take yeah, it over. Yeah, yeah, I mean, a local radio <laughs> campaign really helps out. You know, with the word of mouth. Oh, yeah. We have a very big mouth here. So, yeah. anyway, we're going to uh, take a break, but first we're going to play one of your guys' requests. Great. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, John Wayne, you never heard him on the show. Who? John, John Wayne. I'm a lonesome cowboy. Yeah, John Wayne. It's called uh, Why I Love Her. So, I didn't uh, know John Wayne could sing. Yeah, he, he did. Well, we'll find out. <laughs> I, I, I think we're going to hear it. Tolerate a loser. Americans play to win all the time. <laughs> I love it. Well, I love it. Uh, yeah, one more good. time. Yeah. Say it one more time. Love a winner and will not tolerate a loser. Americans play to win all the time. Hell yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's oh, right. Swore. No, that's right. I love it. You hey, show you me know, a loser. You show me a loser or a winner. He's always, I mean, you don't play to lose. You always play to win, right? If you're. Like me, I play to win on everything I do. Are you an American? I'm an American, Pat, and I'm That's proud to know you, man. That's all that matters. Yeah. One, one thing, Pat, my yeah. uh, dog, who I immensely <laughs> love, he's very loyal to me. He's actually named after General Pat. We call him General love Pat. A really? Uh, yes. I'm an avid bird hunter. I love pheasant hunting, and I love spending my time with my dog out in the fields. Wow. You know what I thought you were going to say? I've read, read, I've read many, many biographies and books on General Pat and himself. And wow. Between him and John Wayne and Ronald Reagan three of the greatest men in my life that I've always respected as a... That owner. show was one of the greatest shows I ever saw was Absolutely. Patton. Absolutely. I Great thought show. Seinfeld was mine. No, no, mine was yeah, Patton. Right, okay. I like Seinfeld and Cheers. I saw him in L.A. when I was a kid when after they won the war. Eisenhower, Patton, yeah. they were all... MacArthur, they were all driving down the street. That was tanks. the Spanish-American War? No, that was after the Second World War. You, oh, weren't, you weren't alive. Bobby, you hadn't lost it yet. 
No, he hasn't. No, I thought I'd trick him. Attack. Thought I'd trick him. No, that's yeah. great. There's a lot of heroes, and they tra- definitely were Americans. But before I forget, uh, Dakota Ross texted me and uh, uh, corrected me. I don't know why I said Tim Cook. It was Andy Cook. Andy is a tree trimming guy and uh, engaged to Ed Birch's daughter, and uh, he was the underbidder for the horse race. So I just kind of wanted to throw that out. Thank you, Andy, and I apologize for calling you Tim. Who got the uh, sitting in with you for an hour? Um, oh, Tom Coons, our state rep, oh, okay. paid five hundred well, bucks for it. <laughs> yeah, he was the only one that bid on it, but it started at four ninety nine, and uh, that was my bid. Okay, and then he. he <laughs> uh, Trump, I wish dollar. you would have gotten that bid. I, I, I you wanted it never so bad. It. Yeah, you would have never paid yeah. for it. Right. Yeah. So Tom <laughs> Coons, uh, state rep, running again. He's uh, hopefully going to be speaker of the house. We got a great guy there, don't we, Brad? Is he going to be Speaker of the on, House? Uh, hopefully he is, yes. Uh, do you know him? He, do I know him? You we, endorsed him? I showed him around all over town. Okay. All right. So you've endorsed him. Yeah, I like Jack uh, Tom Coons very well. Jack yeah. Tom Coons. I didn't know his first name was Jack. <laughs> well, I was looking at Jack Frizzell's name here. I'm oh, God. Jack yeah. Frizzell. Jack yeah. dye his hair, you think, Pete? I don't know. He says he doesn't. Yeah. And he's 74 years old. He's still got brown hair. And that, that, right. His dad was like that. I wonder if it's, it's the toupee. No, no, no. It no. is inherited, Pat. You and I have gray hair, and you were dying yours yeah. for a while, but it looks good going Brad, on. moving on to you. You think uh, Tom's doing a good job? I actually, uh, I'm uh, obviously, I'm always been Republican conservative. I don't own a time personally. I would like to sit down with him sometime and dis- have discussion with him. Yeah. The community seems to support him tremendously. He's uh, serving our district well. Well, I think Tracy's but, running too, and I think she'll uh, do a good job. I think. Anyway, I think Tom was at the St. Mary's Gala Saturday night, so he got to see a lot of people like you there and and uh, listen to them. So that was good. Um, anyway, uh, at, at that party, the gala, it was funnier than heck because uh, when we were younger, we used to sneak out of our windows to go to parties. Now we sneak out of the parties yeah. to go home. <laughs> and that's funny because yeah, yeah, I just... did that Saturday night. <laughs> yeah. We got to the point where, it was like, I don't know, it was probably 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah, you that's know? pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh, my God. And all these young people are saying, where are you going? I says, you know, back when I was younger, I'd party until 2 in the morning, snuck out of the house at my folks' when I was younger to go party. Now, hell, I can't wait to get back home, yeah, you right? know? Yeah. So that, that comes with age. But getting back to lawns, anything else, Jeff, on lawns that you want to speak about? Well, to be honest with you, Pat, um, lawn mowing is only 2% of our business. Um, okay. So as far as, uh, you know, going into mowing lawns and uh, the fertilizing part of it, maybe it'd be better to maybe get Matt Martinson on here sometime to or talk about that. Or uh, Matt's a good guy, too. Yeah. But yeah. how often should you mow your lawn? Once you, Or how often when you put your hydro, <clears throat> whatever you do to it, when should I start mowing and how often should well, I Well, once, uh, once that uh, hydro seed or whatever kind of seed you put in, once it you know gets up there to three, four inches tall, uh, you know, uh, it's time to cut it. You know, I'd, I'd uh, mow it about four times, uh, you know, about once a week. Not No, don't mow it four times a week, but four times. Um, once a week for four weeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. Once a week for four weeks. There we go. That's right. Um, and then uh, let, that's that's time to do a weed and feed, get rid of all the, the weeds and kind of give it some, give it a little pep, you know, get some um, fertilizer on it, and um, then you're going to have a, a nice lawn. Yeah, I think... Uh, it's very important too to uh, tell folks to sharpen their blades. No, that is very, is that, very, very uh, important. A dull blade will it pull the roots right out of the ground. Yeah, it? that it'll you know kind of shred the the top of the the grass, uh, the the blade of the grass, and then it kind of gives it a yellow look because um, mm-hmm. it kind of it kills the top of the grass a little bit there. How important is the grass after you cut it? Let let it lay there, or should a guy rake it up? No, no, it is uh, very important to just. Uh, you know, I don't. Uh, I don't recommend bagging your lawn or raking it after you mow your grass or anything like that. Uh, um, your grass clippings are actually ten percent of your regrowth. Um, oh wow! To help, I didn't know that. Yeah, to help you know, know fill that. fill back in. So yeah, yeah great. Yeah, that's good. Uh, I want to mention Pro Turf too because you know those guys. I know them personally, and they're great people too, and they do a great job on lawns. And I see uh, the high school and the, uh, the elementaries. They do all of those, and I think they're beautiful. Don't you, Brad? I mean, they do a nice job. Yes, I do. I think the pro turf is one of the best lawn keeping people. And that is Pat Curry so speaking like a little girl. Oh, Peter, the better side of me is coming out. Hey, do we have any uh, longtime listeners, first time callers in, Bob, today? 
I think they're listening. Maybe they're not calling. But they're not calling. Well, I hope well, people. I hope you're, you're everybody covering listens. everything. You know, they don't need to ask a question because uh, you're covering. I hope everybody, everybody listens. Well, we this won't talk right about now. sports, but I'm going to tell you something, Bob. The Big Rapids Cardinals got a hell of a good uh, baseball team going this year. The good. varsity and JV both yep. doing really well, and the track team's great. Uh, tennis uh, team, I think, is undefeated in spring ball right now. Yep. Yeah. Well, and you'll be talking about we, that tomorrow. And we've got a show. really a good athletic tra- athletic director, Don Thompson. You got to remember, she picks the coaches. It's all on her. Oh, the coaches. we're going to throw a disclaimer. No, in on we that aren't one, either. Bob. She picks the coaches, and the we coaches have a disclaimer, disclaimer, the disclaimer. Red light, red light, red light. <laughs> and no, who is that? She on? does who do nice. John, Don does a nice job. Her niece is even a better singer. Okay. But anyway, oh, somebody's calling. Somebody's in, calling uh, the office. Yep. Yeah. Anything else, Brad? <laughs> What do you think? You know, uh, another uh, athletic team we don't talk about, maybe the community doesn't know about, it, is that uh, Big Rapids High School has a trap team. Oh, and yeah. every Sunday afternoon, they yep. get together, have they approximately do. 40 um, they do. shooters, yep. male and female, um, and they're just doing a great job of that program, and they're ranked up there with the rest of them in the state and at a national level. Nolan Brandt uh, did excessively well last year. At nationals, is that going on now? Trap it shooting. It is. It is. Last Who? last weekend was the first competition. All right. Who's top dog in Cardinal right now? I, uh, you know, I couldn't really say for oh, sure because okay. uh, we did it this year a little different, where we're shooting on different uh, times. But uh, Landon Bittner for sure is always up there. Oh yeah, he works for me. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Great guy, great I family. Better, I better watch yeah, how good, I treat him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, boy, yeah, he's I... always in the top two or three. You know, yeah. but comes from a good family. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. That's yeah, very good family. All those guys yep. are good families, yep. aren't they? Yeah, the Brant boys are shooting well this year as oh, well. Oh yeah, you can't uh, beat Ben and Cheryl's yeah, yes. four boys. Yes, yes. Yeah, and uh, we have. Uh, um, Maya Chapitz shooting this year. She is she's, too. I believe she's enjoying herself. Wow, so yeah. She's up there. Uh, Mark Grinrich's daughter. She's shooting as well this year. So there's three or five girls on the team right now. Shooting. Really? So that's exciting to see as well. So yeah, I'm glad you times. brought that up because I know uh, Jake Kanoff. He was pretty good at that, wasn't he? Yes. Now yes, absolutely. And yeah. we have bowling. We have a great equestrian oh, team. Yeah. You know, we have all these. Yeah. All yeah. the sports we have, and Title 19 has been, or Title 9, Title 19, it's been a good thing. You know, we, we've got the boys and girls We have sports. a disclaimer here again, Bob. I think so, yeah. The opinions expressed. Whatever, Pete. Well, I think we do. I <laughs> no, think we do. Are those of yes, we do. We have a great, great uh, athletic program. And I want to tell you, we can't use you on the, we, we put artificial turf down, though, on the football field. But it's not a football field. It's an all-purpose stadium, it. but uh, it's a football field. And uh, it's the same as Ferris, but it's the padding and the underneath stuff we got underneath the uh, turf is what makes it important. It's less harmful when the when the kids get falling and they don't get hurt as bad. So, you know, we spent a lot of money with this bond issue. You folks in Big Rapids passed, and we are so thankful. Well, of, not uh, all of us. Yeah, we we are so thankful oh. of uh, Big Rapids <laughs> for passing this bond. Yes, you and, are. Uh, I know you are. You know, it, Every year, passing the millage and stuff for the Nun Homestead, and uh, we thank we thank you as a board, uh, 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 as a Big Rapids school system. We think it's very important. Well, you're welcome, Pete. Thank you, From Pat. The bottom of thank my you, wallet. Pat. And I want to tell you about Curry's. Have I talked to you about oh, me you having a hamburger it. yesterday? No. Hurry up, got Have, a few well, I just said I had a hamburger there yesterday. Can I tell you how good that hamburger was? Uh uh-uh. uh. Huh? I put a little mayonnaise and ketchup and a piece of cheese on Covered there. Up the- I thought I died and went to heaven. Wow! And I'm not trying to push courage. At your age, anything. you might have. Well, I know I didn't. Ch- I didn't choke on the meat or anything. Yeah, no, I had a good time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. What else? We're going to close. Why the don't show we uh, play uh, another one from uh, the request line here? For, okay, for our gentleman. That's from Hank Williams Jr. So we'll Let's get that do one. it. Yeah. Yep.